Hello, Gemini, and welcome to your tarot card reading for April 2024. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the channel. For those of you who are new here, my name is Jane. Welcome to April 2024, which is a very big month astrologically. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at both the tarot predictions and mix it with a lot of astrology here for you. So as you're choosing which sign to watch, you may want to start off with your sun sign or your rising sign. And if you would like to have that third perspective, your moon sign is also quite beneficial as well. So let's go ahead and jump right into the reading and I'll see you guys in just a sec. Hello, Gemini, and welcome to your April 2024 tarot card reading. Let's go ahead and get started here. Okay. Oh, I love this for you. Use your mind wisely. And since you are so connected with our intellectual mind, this is really great for you. Now, keep in mind that throughout April, we do have a Mercury retrograde going on. Obviously, that's important for you because you're ruled by Mercury and it's just going to be a pretty intense Mercury retrograde as well because it's coupled with an eclipse, or the big eclipse in Aries. So it is going to be really important for you to think things through thoroughly, to use that power of logic and, ration and rationale to your benefit. This is probably not going to be a time to do things impulsively and emotionally, even though I think sometimes Aries, I mean, it doesn't mean that it's a bad thing. It doesn't mean you're going to be making a mistake if you do that. It's just to put some thought behind it will likely guide you in a better way. Um, you know, Aries is so impulsive and Aries does, it just packs such a punch you know, plus we've got an eclipse in there as well. So we just have some really powerful things going on. Um, so we just want to make sure that we're thinking things through, you know, to our, for, for the sake of our benefit. So we're not shooting ourselves in the foot or we're not doing anything too haphazardly. You know, we can do things with speed and with haste, but also consciously and purposefully and with a significant degree of mindfulness. Okay. So let's see what comes through with the moon card. So for Gemini, what is it that you need to know? You're very close to achieving your goal. I love that card. Because especially if you're feeling like things are dragging on or you have questions like, when is this going to happen? Da, 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 da. You know, we all kind of hit those moments in life where it feels like that finish line is never going to hit or we're never actually going to see the results. This is confirmation that you just kind of have to keep going or you have to just put a little bit more effort into it. Um, this is kind of like the, the three foot rule, you know, <laughs> like how many people who were digging for gold back in the day gave up three feet before they struck gold. Um, it's kind of like that. And I know, you know, like in Vegas, I'm from Las Vegas, right? So being in Vegas, it was always kind of the joke where the people who would sit on the slot machines, right? You'd sit there, put money in, money in, money in, pull the lever, pull the lever, pull the lever. You'd get up, you'd leave, the next person would come, pull the lever, and then boom, you'd hit the jackpot, right? So I feel like you are just really close. You just have to keep going. And again, using your mind wisely, it's that power of perseverance and that power of saying, no, we said we were going to do it. We're going to stick to it. We're going to keep going. We're not going to detract because I know that Mars coming in through Pisces can have a significant wandering energy. The good news is, is that for the first, you know, week or week and a half or so of April, Mars is in this conjunction of, with Saturn, which is going to really help with keeping things structured. So you know, um, being aware of that desire to wander is okay, but to not succumb to the desire to wander is really where the superpower is. All right. Gemini, what else do you need to know here? The high priestess. Well, I already said perseverance and I often use that word when the strength card comes out. So there we go. Kind of a double whammy of perseverance. So again, you know, perseverance is, 
I mean, it's like we know it's what we need to do. We know we need to persevere. We know we need to really commit. But sometimes we do grow weary and we do grow tired. But I feel like with this high priestess, there's this internal knowing. Gemini says, if I, if I, I know that if I keep going, I know that if I keep trying, if I keep showing up, if I make certain adjustments and I alter things and I make modifications, I know that if I do that, it's going to work. And I know that I'm going to get to where I want to be, but it does require actual adjustments. It's not just thinking about it or talking about it, right? Using your mind wisely can also really coincide with how your mind communicates with your body and being Aries season for the first part of April with Mercury in Aries, I would say that actually there is a strong link between how our mind Mercury is communicating with our body Aries. Okay. And how our body responds to the commands of our mind. And really like it, it's about getting your body to do what your mind tells it to do and kind of being in control of yourself. And that's kind of what this strength card often represents too, because we have the, the unruly lion, the beast who's being controlled by the divine or the higher intelligence there as symbolized by the woman with the infinity sign here. Um, and our body is kind of like that lion. It kind of has its own preferences. It kind of has its own things that it wants to do. It has its own pride. It has its own comfort level. You know, it has its own little world, but your mind, which is much, much, much higher degree and higher level. If it can communicate properly to your body, your body will respond accordingly. Okay. So really working on that mind body connection can be extraordinarily beneficial for you. And when I look at this ACE of cups, I say, if you do that, if you do have this nice coherence between body and mind, then there is likely to be some special gift. And I love an ace of cups because it's usually something that's very wanted, right? You want this and it's probably something you've been contemplating or you've had a desire for, for some significant time. It probably is in line with your goal, right? So there's some kind of opportunity that comes in that says, Hey, if you really do want to achieve this goal, I'm going to give you the chance. And we want to be mentally and emotionally prepared for this because sometimes this comes in and we're like, Oh, well, I wasn't expecting that. Well, I'm not ready. And we tend to push it away, but I think you want to be ready for it. I, cause I, th I think everyone just given the landscape, the astrological environment, as it stands right now, every single person who's, you know, looking for an improvement in their life in some way is kind of feeling this sense of change. And it feels like the times are changing. The energy is changing. You yourself are changing. So when something like this comes in, it's a symbol that like, yes, those changes are real. It's not just a sense of change. It's actual change. And this is a step in that new direction. This is a step toward what you want. But you do have to be ready and mentally prepared for this because if you're not, it can be scary. The very thing you want, the thing you claim that you want can actually be scary because there's responsibility here that comes with this. There's investment that comes with this or a, a required investment that comes with this. Um, cause this is, this, as it stands alone is just a potential of something you actually have to dive in and create with this ACE of cups. It's not going to create itself. Okay. So you want to be ready to capture that. And I, I think you are inherently you are. So when it comes in, it's a matter of like, using your mind to say, okay, it's time for me to get a little uncomfortable. Cause I don't think your body is going to initially embrace this. Your body will likely, I don't want to say reject, but it is going to have a reaction to it. And that's why using your mind to overpower your body is going to be the best thing that you can do for yourself. 
Okay, you got to push yourself and everyone, I'm saying this to everyone, not just Gemini, but to be in a state of discomfort is really, really important. We have to get uncomfortable. We have to do things that are a little new or hard. Look, see, Wheel of Fortune. Um, if in order for us to proceed and in order for us to progress. And we have the Wheel of Fortune, again, as like good things are coming, that wheel is turning, the change is happening. And there's something so beautiful about that wheel of fortune because it's, it's not unmanageable. It's slow. I never see the wheel of fortune as being fast unless it's accompanied by the tower card or an eight of wands or something. But generally speaking, it's a pretty slow moving thing and it does happen in increments. So it gives us time to adjust and come into equilibrium. And then we kind of grow again. And then we adjust again. Then we continually go through this process, but it's like kind of going up the stairs, right? You walk up the stairs. Maybe sometimes you need to take a little bit of a break and then you continue walking up some more stairs. So it, it's always going to push you upwards. It's always going to get you moving in that direction. Even if you have to stop and take a few little breaks here and there, the wheel of fortune is a very low pressure kind of card. It's like the door is open when you're ready. You don't have to act immediately. You don't have to act right away. The thing is though, is that I look at this Knight of wands. I, I, I genuinely think you're going to want to like you don't have to push really hard, but I think you want to. You don't have to dive in really hard with the Ace of Cups, but I think you're going to want to because it's all being driven by this Seven of Coins energy, which is now this is not a very emotional card. Okay. This is not a time where we look and feel about stuff. Okay. We don't look at our life and have all these feelings. What we do is we look at our life and we kind of take an inventory. And we say, okay, well, this is what it is. This is where I live. This is how much money we have. This is my relationship status. It's very black and white. It's very much on paper, right? This is what is real. This is what currently exists. And you kind of go through that list and you say, all right, where am I looking for improvement? It's kind of like if you're doing some kind of an audit or if you're doing, you know, inventory, I always say it's like you're taking stock, right? You're looking at the balance sheet you're being realistic, you're being intelligent, you're being logical and practical. Again, with the use your mind wisely, you're re-evaluating some things, but you're not getting overly invested. And I think it's that detachment that is really important because it's going to make that ace of cups a lot less scary. Okay. Um, and you're going to see more clearly that like, okay, this is an opportunity for me to improve on some of these metrics, these aspects of my life. And this is a process that I think Gemini actually will enjoy, you know, cause again, you're not like, this is a, probably a private experience. It's probably not something you're going through with another person. I mean, if you're married, then yeah, maybe you're going through it with a spouse, but for the most part, this is a really private thing. So it's not out there. It's not in the public for everyone to see your shortcomings. It's really just you and what you want and what you want to improve and what changes you want to make and the things that you think you can do, right? So it's all very much kind of like a self-assessment. It's not coming from the outside in. And because of that, you get to set your own goals and your own bars and your own metrics. So this is a, a process I think you'll enjoy because of that because there is an element of privacy with it. Even with the high priestess, there's an element of privacy. Look at that knight of wands and he is just diving into it right now. He enjoys the adventure of trying to find the places that you can most likely improve. And the knight of wands and the wheel of fortune are generally pretty optimistic cards. I'd say both of these are ruled by Jupiter. We have a lot of Jupiterian energy at play right now. And 
I just, I feel like that sense of possibility, that sense of optimism, that sense of belief and faith and all of that is really coming through quite strong, um, which is great. (laughs) That's always a good thing. So let's see what else comes out for Gemini. Last row of cards. Okay. All right. What I like about seven of coins with the four of cups is that it does seem like you are quite discerning and that you are detached enough to the point where it will be beneficial. Your, your detachment right now is beneficial. It is going to be something that works to your benefit because again, the, it's, I mean, it can be an emotional time. I say Aries, we have a lot of Aries in the chart. We have a lot of Pisces and fire and water signs. They, they do, they are more intuitive and impulsive and passionate. And there is a lot of emotion that comes through these two elements where air and earth are a little bit more you know, cold, hard facts oriented. Okay. So there is a lot of possibility to be deeply emotional, but I think with your ruling planet Mercury in retrograde, I, I don't know. I don't know that you'll, you will be like that. I think you're going to have that more analytical mind. And there is an element of caution for Gemini where you're thinking things through. You are, again, analyzing and weighing your options. And it does feel like there are choices placed on the table in front of you. And you are going to absolutely take time to discern, right? To really think about and consider which options are best for you. And even when this ace of cups comes in, I do think you're going to take a step back and say, is this really what I want? I think the answer is yes. And eventually with that night, I'm sorry, with the page of wands, eventually you will jump into that ace of cups, but I I don't know that you're going to just jump in willy nilly without a proper analysis of it first. I think you want to make sure that it's aligned with your goal. You want to make sure that it's something that fits and it will, but I I think your analysis of it is going to make you feel better about the investment in it because it will require investment. Remember, this is just a potential. So it's going to require something from you. It's going to require time and energy and effort. It's going to require your creativity and your talents and your skills. So makes sense that you're like, well, do I really want to invest like that? Am I capable of it at this time? Do I have the bandwidth to do it? You know, there are going to be all these factors that you're going to have to consider. And that's definitely a part of the seven of coins energy. You know, you're not just going to take it just to take it just because you're desperate. You know, I definitely don't see desperation coming through. I see control. That's the strength card, right? I see you being in control of yourself and having restraint. And I actually do like the restraint because then when you decide to move forward, it's a real commitment. It's real and it's true. And it's something that you can sustain. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that with Aries season, we have this trajectory and I, I, I really focus on the fire signs specifically, although I do think every element has their own trajectory, but I, I, Aries being the first sign of the Zodiac around the equinox point, we go from Aries to Leo, which is the next fire sign. Leo is the fire sign associated with creation. So between Aries and Leo, there's a lot of percolating that happens. So a lot of the initial spark and impulse and desire that happens in Aries doesn't always take shape until Leo season or even on into Virgo and Libra season um, near the end of summer, beginning of autumn. And this, like, this is the moment though, where we make like where certain impulses start to stand out because you could have a lot of different ideas because Aries is really creative because we have this sun exalted, 
this beautiful sun placement, which we love and it's great. And it channels through those creative ideas like crazy. But Aries is not meant, this is not the archetype where we bring things over the finish line. This is just the initiation of things. So there can be a lot of things really pumping through and you don't want to just grab on desperately to the first thing that shows up because it may peter out, you may lose interest, you may not work out, you may associate with the wrong people, whatever, and just may not necessarily go, like I say, all the way across the finish line. So yeah, it's good that you're being discerning about this Ace of Cups because this might be one of many Four of Cups, right? You've got a lot of different options in front of you. You're not just going to take whatever. So the discernment is good. And I don't want you to think that that's a bad thing. And if you're experiencing resistance, that is also okay because that is your body trying to feel what's right for you. Okay. And there's a lot about your head, heart, head, body alignment. Like I was talking about in the beginning, your head and your body need to be cohesively working together. And if for whatever reason, something is rejecting this, you're going to have to process, well, what is the, my real objection to this beautiful ACE of cups? It's clearly something that I want. So why am I truly objecting? Where's the real fear? Because if you don't really address the fear then I'm concerned that like you're, you're not going to actually pursue that ace of cups. Okay. And because you are very close to achieving your goal. Now, when I say very close, that's relative. Okay. It doesn't necessarily mean in the next couple of weeks, it could be in the next couple of years. It could be in the next couple of months. You know, it probably has a little bit of a longer time frame, but, um, this is an important step with it because there is some kind of an adjustment or choice that's needing to be made that is going to guide you more closely toward the finish line. Okay. All right. Let's go ahead and pull out the clarifiers for you. All right. So the cards I'm about to pull out are the cards we will cover in the comprehensive reading. And we talked for another 25 to 30 minutes or so about all these. So it's like a whole second reading. So if you want to join me for that, the link is in both the description and the comment thread down below. So if you want to join, you are more than welcome. So let's go ahead and get started with the high priestess. Okay. That card really wanted to come out. Oh, high priestess. Of course it wanted to come out. <laughs> okay. Wanted to meet its match. Okay. Ooh, and another ace of cups and a judgment all reversed. Okay. Queen of coins, hanged man, king of swords, loving the king of swords for you. That's definitely you. See what I mean? I told you that it's going to require an investment. It's there's creativity. There's processes that happen behind that ACE of cups. It's not just, oh, this thing came in and that's it, right? That's why you are being so discerning about it. Death. Beautiful. We love to see that. And a nine of coins could completely change the game for you, Gemini, that ACE of cups, queen of wands, six of cups, and page of cups. I like the page energy for Gemini's a lot. Three of swords, five of cups, and another wheel of fortune upright. Eight of cups, another four of cups, six of coins, king of wands, the empress, 10 of wands, Four of Wands, I love the Four of Wands coming out reversed this month. Uh, nine of Wands. Page of Wands reversed. Five of Wands, Two of Swords, and Four of Swords. Okay, so this is where we're going to pick up in the comprehensive. So again, if you want to join, you are more than welcome. You guys know I love you. Have an amazing April, and I'll talk to you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.